Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm making them in an attempt just to share some of my knowledge around with regards to money and finances, to impart some of my knowledge after a career in financial planning so far of 20 years. Um, I'm a freelance financial para planner, which means I help other financial planners to prepare the financial plans for their clients. So that means I come across my desk a lot of different people and their scenarios. Um, mums and dads planning retirement, um, new families, starting families, you know, buying homes, upgrading their homes, things like that. Young people just starting out with their savings. Um, also up to multinational companies, you know, with their retirement plans for the thousands of companies and millions of dollars. So I've sort of seen it all with regards to strategies and whatnot. I've seen what works and what doesn't work. Um, I'm an investor myself, I have been for the last 10, 15 years, and I've done pretty well with money. For someone that started with nothing, came from nothing, no handouts, no, no nothing, um, meagre beginnings, um, I've done pretty well with money. So I haven't found it extraordinarily hard. All I've focused on is learning about money, implementing what I've learned, which is one of the main things, and then writing it out, giving it time to see the results. So this Money Messenger project, is a side project I'm working on just to impart some of my knowledge when it comes to financial planning, um, all topics money. These videos are not meant to be financial advice, they are just financial knowledge. So it's up to you to broaden your horizons, learn about money, perhaps learn something you didn't know you didn't know about money, and then research more as you need to so that you can implement some of the stuff that you learn. And with anything, if unsure, seek advice. Pay the fee, meet with the accountant, the lawyer, the financial planner, if you need proper advice um, and they can help you in the right direction. So today's video, we're going to focus on debt, namely good debt versus bad debt and what the difference is. Do you know the difference? Not all debt is created equally. Some debt can actually be quite advantageous when it comes to investing. Problem is these days, for many a days, a lot of people get caught up with the wrong type of debt, bad debt. It's called bad debt because the interest you pay on the loan, the credit card, the car loan is not tax deductible. That's because whenever you buy something using debt that will not earn you income, you can't claim the interest as a tax deduction. So if you're ever going to buy something that won't make you income, do not use debt to do it. Simple rule. That's how it is. Why? Because you can't claim that interest is a tax deduction, which means you offset against your income for the year and you pay less tax to the government. Nice. If you can't claim it as a tax deduction, that's because it doesn't make you income. There's no point having that debt. That means credit card debt, car loan debt, store cards, uh, furniture, payment plan options. Don't do it the things that you're going to buy are actually going to go down in value over time. They're not going to make you income. They're not going to go up in value. That means you're buying a depreciating asset. So when you have a debt attached to that, like a car loan, for example, you're taking out a loan, paying interest to the bank for the privilege to then buy an asset which is going down in value. No good. On top of the money that the car is losing in value, you add on the interest that you're paying to the bank and you've got yourself a whopping big expensive card. So instead, don't ever use debt for things that will go down in value. Just a simple rule. If it's a thing, something you wanna buy for your home, your lifestyle, usually it's not gonna make you money. Do not use debt for it. Use cash. Think ahead of the game, get your savings in order and be prepared. Even cars can be bought with cash. Yes, they can. If too hard, just aim for half the car at least paid with cash. Just minimize your bad debt whenever possible. Credit cards particularly, you know, interest rates can be up to 24% or more. That's huge. You can't just pay off the minimum every time you get your credit card statement. You have to repay the whole balance. Otherwise, you're being charged interest. And people don't realize that that interest after the interest-free period is backdated and then compounds, which means it's added to your credit card loan balance and you start paying interest on top of interest on top of interest. That's why credit card debt gets out of control. Um, car loans, you'll find that even over the term of five or six or seven years, most of those repayments are going towards paying the interest. It's only in the later years that you actually repay the car loan. 
um, higher purchase or furniture store plans. You know, you're going into a shop buying furniture at retail price, which is already jacked up for the rest of us. Um, there's a good profit in the shops. Add on the interest that you're going to be paying for those repayment plans that they offer. It may seem like a good idea or that after the 24 months, for example, you'll repay the furniture without paying any interest. But if you actually read the fine print of those furniture purchase plans, the money that they ask you to repay each month will not equal the amount you borrowed after the 24 months. So that means you'll get hit with interest. Sometimes that's also backdated. And you may be wondering why you're left with a very expensive debt, even though you made the repayments that they asked you to. So all of those types of debts are bad. They're not gonna make you money the thing that you're buying with it, they're not going to help you financially. It's crazy to take out a loan for something that goes down in value. Really bad financial sense. Even your home loan can be considered bad debt. That's because usually when you have your home, you don't make money from it. I don't mean the value of your home going up because actually the value of your home, the property, the house, it actually goes down in value over time. It depreciates. Your house structure goes down in value over time. It's the land which goes up in value. So if ever you're looking to buy a home and your value of your property goes up, that's because the land got more expensive, not the property. So if you usually, you have your home, you live in your home, you're not making income from it. Even your home loan is considered bad debt. The property land may go up, but you're not making any income from it. Uh, so you can't claim the interest as a tax deduction. So that's what we call bad debt. Um, what else? I don't mean if you have Airbnb going from your home. That's a new thing. Most people don't go out to buy a home that they're living in and paying money to the bank just to do the Airbnb. That's a side thing. So let's talk about good debt. Good debt is where you should focus on. But I don't mean going out and getting a whole bunch of good debt under your name and thinking that you're going to get rich and famous. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Debt is debt. Debt means you're always paying interest to the bank or whoever's lending you the money. When you have debt that you use for investment purposes, which means buying an investment property, which pays you income, rent from the, from the tenant, also goes up in value if you've picked wisely, or when you use debt to buy shares in a company, which might be listed on the stock exchange and they fluctuate in value, Again, hopefully if you picked a good company, they should go up over the long term in value. Um, also tertiary education. It's not really an asset. It doesn't really make you money. But if you take on debt to get tertiary education, which in theory makes you more valuable in the marketplace and means you're going to secure a higher paying job, hopefully, then that too can be coined as good debt. But let's focus on the main two, which is using share, which is using borrowed money to invest in shares or property, or even a business as well. When you take out money to buy an investment property, for example, you buy that property from day one with the, pur with the purpose of investing it to make income. The government in Australia rewards you for that by allowing you to claim the interest that you pay to the bank as a tax deduction. So at the end of the year, when you do your tax return, all your income and expenses are put together, the interest comes off your income, so you pay less tax to the government. That helps you then to be able to afford the investment property, to hold it and keep the tenant housed. So that's what we call good debt. The property goes up in value, the property makes income, the interest on the loan is tax deductible, and over the years, you should find yourself in a position where the house far outweighs the interest that you're paying to the bank. The rent that you're making, the, the uh, increase in the house price, far outweighs the interest that you've paid to the bank. When using good debt for investing, you need to look at each individual investment on their own to see if it warrants taking out debt for the investment. Taking on debt for an investment increases your risks because if you lose the investment, if the house burns down, if your share portfolio disappears overnight, if the stock market crashes, you still have that debt to repay. Same with a car loan. Whenever you take out a car loan, if your car gets stolen, you still have to repay the loan. So it's important that you always assess an investment, especially when you're going to use debt towards it, whether the investment can stand up on its own two, on its own two feet. 
doesn't warrant taking out debt for it because if you have more money invested you can make more more money but you also have more risks so before you go out and get debt thinking I'm gonna win on this on the share market or I'm gonna buy investment properties over time which are all great strategies you need to consider what you're actually going to put that debt borrowed money into you have investments that can be either positively geared or negatively geared and that means when you've borrowed money does the income that you make from the investment, whether it be share dividends or rental property income, does it outweigh the cost of the interest that you're paying to the bank? Now, a lot of times when people buy investment properties, they buy uh, properties that the, the rental income doesn't quite cover the interest that they have to pay the bank, plus the real estate agent fees, plus the maintenance costs, insurance, that type of thing. So what we what we call that is a negatively geared investment. It means that the income you're earning from the investment doesn't quite cover all of the expenses. So you're in a negative. Now in Australia, the good thing is you can claim that negative as a tax deduction as well. Pay less income tax to the government, that savings you make can then help you pay for that negatively geared investment. Over the years though, after two, three, four, five years, that property, there's a bell curve, that property should start to outperform the cost of the borrowings. Then the property becomes positively geared. That means the rent is enough to cover the interest payments, the uh, maintenance, the insurance, all that type of thing, and starts making you money. Now, obviously from day one, the idea is to get a great property that is already positively geared because it's no good when investments cost you money. Even if they are tax deductible or not, you don't want too many investments costing you money because there's only so much you can afford if everyone's taking a little bit out of your pocket. You need to be able to hold the investment. Likewise with shares, the dividends that you make from shares, they should outweigh the cost of the borrowings for the loan that you that you took out for those shares. The aim with debt when using your investment is to have positively geared investments in your portfolio. That way you're making money. So the aim of today's video was just to really explain the difference between good debt and bad debt. That term is thrown around out there a lot, but do you really know what it means? The investments that you have, are they outperforming the cost of your borrowings or not? Do you hold good investment properties? If you're on the other side of the fence and you find that you don't actually have any investments yet, you but you have some bad debt, you maybe have some credit card, car loans, personal loans, that type of thing, you need to start getting rid of that before you can talk about investing. So the aim of the game when it comes to money is invest wisely. If you're going to use debt, use debt wisely. Debt can be there and you can win from using debt if you buy correct investments. If you're using debt for lifestyle and focusing on bad debt, car loans, credit cards, whatnot, you won't win financially, you will go backwards financially. You need to distinguish the difference. Rule is, if you're ever going to buy something with debt, make sure it will make you money. If it won't make you money, then never ever use debt to pay for it. Only use savings. And yes, I even mean car loans. I'll see you soon at the next uh, video and stay tuned for more. Bye everyone.